All right, this video is going to serve as an introduction to and some practice with Punnett squares. Uh, Punnett squares are kind of like the bread and butter of basic genetics uh, when we're dealing with Mendelian style of inheritance. Um, now, Punnett squares essentially combine one parent, which is denoted by these two squares, uh, with another parent, which is denoted by these two squares, into a singular organism um, and what the possible outcomes are for that organism. Now, the possible outcomes are going to be listed here in these four boxes. Um, and you'll see what I'm talking about in a little bit. The two key concepts you got to get down are genotype and phenotype, which we made a separate video about. Go ahead and check that out now if you need some review about uh, what those two terms mean. However, um, to get started, I want to start with the heterozygous, uh, two heterozygous parents. Now, what does that mean? That means that you have a combination of dominant and recessive alleles for each parent. Parent, excuse me. So our first example will be heterozygous and heterozygous mixing together. So one parent I'm going to take and put up here on the top. And that parent I'm going to put on here on the side. And then the beauty of the Punnett square is it gives you all the different possible genotypes. Uh, so you just mix together just kind of like a uh, Excel spreadsheet or whatever, you mix together the different alleles that line up. So here I'm going to have this big A mixed with this little A. Uh, here it's kind of the same thing. So this big A is going to mix with this little A. So wherever they cross, write that down and write that down. So the result is that for when you mix this parent right here, this heterozygous parent with this heterozygous parent, you get four possible genotype outcomes, meaning that the offspring or the organism that results could possibly result with any one of these four genotypes. Um, you'll see that you have one genotype that's dominant dominant. You have two genotypes that are heterozygous, and then you have one genotype that's homozygous recessive. So one homozygous dominant, two heterozygous, and one homozygous recessive. Now what's important here. And this is where kind of the questions come from on the simple genetics tests are not what the genotypes are, because a lot of people can get this far and can mix together these two different parents. Rather, it's what, what are the possible phenotypes. Um, and here, since dominant genes went out over recessive genes, we have a different video about that. Check that out if you need to. Um, you actually have three, one, two, three, possible or uh, three of these four outcomes are all dominant. And only one is recessive phenotype showing, meaning that you have a 75% chance because one, two, three out of four, that you'll have the dominant phenotype showing because you have big A, big A, big A. You have a 25% chance that the phenotype will be recessive. Um, this is kind of important because like say, for example, cystic fibrosis, um, both parents might not be uh, you know, manifesting a cystic fibrosis syndrome. They might be heterozygous, both of them, for cystic fibrosis. So neither of them have it, but if those two parents that are carriers of that trait, I mean, they both have the recessive copy of that trait, if they have an offspring together, well, there is a 25% chance that their offspring will be homozygous recessive and thus have cystic fibrosis. So it might be a case that they have three children and those three children could be one, two, and three, and none of those three children are showing cystic fibrosis when they have the fourth, it could. Uh, probability would say that it would. Now, obviously, it doesn't always work like that in real life, but that's an example of a Punnett square. Um, so kind of work through these if, you know, they're not always going to be um, heterozygous, mixing with heterozygous. They're not always going to be two by two. Um, sometimes, you know, the, uh, on a test, they'll have more... Uh, extensive genotypes, so like four-letter genotypes mixing with four-letter genotypes, and the outcomes are obviously much more extreme. Uh, just go ahead and practice with it and see what you come up with.